Wow, what a day we have been having. Um, I expect you're like me, completely overwhelmed by the quality of the presentations. I'm going to invite you now on a journey. This is a journey that's going to take us from antiquity to the present and into a future. A future that I think is going to be a brighter and better future in which our children do not have to grow up with the threat of blindness from a neglected tropical disease, trachoma. So let's go back to the beginning. This is a page from the Ebus Papyrus, which dates from about 1500 BC. The Ebus Papyrus described the presentation and the treatment of a blinding disease called trachoma. And it's a nasty disease. It makes your eyelashes that normally poke outwards and protect your eye from dust and other particles, it makes them slowly rotate inwards until they turn around and they touch against the cornea and they scratch it away. Now, I think we've all experienced having an insect or sand in our eyes, and we can relate to having something in our eye. But for people with trachoma, that foreign body sensation, that scratching, that irritation is non-stop. It's day in, it's day out, it's all day, it's every day. The obvious consequence of that is blindness. Blindness and a life of dependency. But that's not the whole story. Not the whole story by any means. And trachoma is an ancient disease. It was once common in my own original home country of England. It was common here in the southeast of the United States. And former President Jimmy Carter told, tells stories, has told me, about how his mum used to treat patients for trachoma when he was a boy. Now, mercifully, it's not present here now. It's not present in Europe. It's still, though, in places like this, and this is the highlands of Ethiopia. I mentioned trachoma as a neglected tropical disease, but I really think that it's an ancient disease of neglected people. Those living in a place like this, they're just like us at the end of the day. Wives want their husbands to be faithful. Husbands want their wives to be faithful and loyal. They want unity and love in the household. They want their kids to have a brighter future than them. They want them to do well at school. They want them to do healthy. It's the same as us. It's the same as us. But they don't have the same access or privileges that we do. If you live in an environment like this, you need to have two adults and kids in the household in order to have a functioning household. People are scratching out a living from the earth, growing the food that they need. If they don't grow enough food, they don't eat. If they don't build decent shelter, they don't have shelter. So they rely on each other, and they rely on social networks so that you can borrow from your neighbor, and when your neighbor needs something, you can give to the neighbor. So in this case, Guy is wealthy, he's got power, he's got two strong oxen, he can help you plow your field if you can help him with some other device. So this is the way things work in those environments. I'm going to pull you forward now to the present a little bit. Trachoma is different from the other neglected diseases because it's caused by a bacteria and it's spread from person to person by flies and on fingers and dirty faces. And this is where the good news comes in. Because it's bacterial, it means we can do what? Treat it with antibiotics. And because it's associated with hygiene, we can work on water provision, sanitation, hygiene promotion to stop it being transmitted. And this is where um, the drug company Pfizer come in. 
large pharmaceutical company. It's popular, of course, to talk badly about companies like this. But Pfizer have stepped up to the plate and have donated every single dose of antibiotic that the global program can use. 800 million and counting. If you were to go and buy it, and I don't expect any of you to do that, that would cost you $20 billion. And they give it away for free. And I work for the International Trachoma Initiative. They give the drug to us, and we give it to the countries based on need. Little plug, the International Trachoma Initiative is part of the Task Force for Global Health, which is an Emory affiliate. It's probably the most effective part of Emory you've never heard of. And <laughs> And we have an active internship program which is starting this year, so look it up. The drug is donated as part of a comprehensive strategy to eliminate the disease, and we call it SAFE. S for surgery, A for antibiotics, F for facial cleanliness, <laughs> and E for environmental improvement. Sorry, I thought you would know what it meant. <laughs> So um, let's run through, the, um, run through the parts of the strategy. People with advanced trachoma, the lashes are already against the eye. You can cut across the top of the lid, separate the layers, suture it back together so that the lashes point out again. We don't want to be doing that. We want to be preventing it. But it's an effective, um, effective treatment. The picture shows a lady called Mare, and Mare was on the front page of the New York Times back in 2005 with her daughter there in Natnesh. Just as I was describing, she had already been divorced by her husband. She'd been abandoned by her family. She was living in abject poverty, and her daughter, 13 in that picture, was the only one to look after her. And she wore a pair of these around her neck. It's a pair of forceps made from recycled tin can. And in that mesh, you pluck out her mother's lashes to stop them scratching her eye. I went to visit Mare in an Atnesh three years later. This is about 2008. And I found her living in the same one-roomed house, one room, which was kitchen, living room, bedroom, all together. And she's looking much healthier, obviously. Her eyes are bright. She's able to work. She's able to farm. I asked her, what do you think your life would have been like if you had not been offered that surgery? And she took this pose and sat and thought for a minute. And the answer she gave was very simple. A life of poverty, begging, or death. And then she continued to think. So what we were able to do is Mare is one of two million people who have been operated through the global program. We haven't changed her living conditions. We haven't changed that. But we have changed her life. And we've given her hope. And hope comes in many different forms. It also comes in the form of pink tablets, which is our Zithromax and this oral suspension for children to take their azithromycin. And this is me back last year in Ethiopia, distributing one of 80 million or so doses that were distributed that year. And if you just pause for a moment, 80 million, that would be the same as giving everybody in Georgia a dose of antibiotic 10 times. That was just last year. And can you see how I'm concentrating? I'm concentrating because we give the medicine based on um, height and the kids get measured and we give them this number of milliliters of um, syrup or if they're larger, we give them tablets um, based on the dosing stick. And the people who really do this are village volunteers and they take their job very seriously, which is why I'm concentrating. I'm also concentrating because I've been humbled doing this before, because I've been doing this work for 22 years. And I just want to share a little story where it was one of those trips in Africa that starts 
with driving for a day and then sleeping in the Zero Star Hotel and then getting up before dawn and driving again for another six hours on a road made entirely of rocks. And after the bone-jarring ride, I'm getting out and talking to the people about the distribution. I'm saying, guys, you know, I'm just messing around. Why do you bother? Why do you come out? Haven't you got better things to do? And the man took my wrist. And for those of you who have been to developing countries, and particularly in Africa, if they take your wrist, it's a, it's a very clear signal. The signal is, uh -uh, you're not running away. I've got something to tell you. And he proceeded to tell me. He said, you know, we live in a very far place. We don't see the health service very often. They don't come to us. And when the service comes here, I am going to stop what I'm doing, and I am going to bring my kids to you to take this medicine. Because it may be four tablets to you, it may just be four tablets, but to me, it shows that somebody cares. This is now southern Africa, this is Malawi. We're now on the facial cleanliness, the hygiene promotion part of the um, program. I'm speaking to the little girl in the middle is, is called Ruth. She's an absolute rock star. She's the deputy head girl at the primary school, and she's also in charge of the hygiene promotion group. And she leads the kids in that, the flip-flop shuffle dance and songs and poems, educating her peers and also the community about hygiene promotion and protection from disease. Why is this important? Well, Ruth's only 11, yeah. I started this work 20 years ago. It's only going to be eight or nine years. She's likely to be the female head of a household herself. And an educated woman produces healthy kids. So people like Ruth are our future. And there she is. They won the district prize for having the best club, and she was so proud to get that um, cup out and share it with us. The last part of the strategy is E, the environmental improvements. Hygiene promotion in the absence of water is meaningless. So we promote water points, we promote sanitation. So in addition to the 2 million surgeries, the 800 million doses of drugs that have been donated, and the tens of millions of dollars that have been uh, rallied in order to distribute these things, Millions of household latrines have also been built as part of this program. And when you do all of this together, what do you get? Well, you've got your safe strategy. You're removing the um, risk of disability by the surgery, the antibiotic treatment, the hygiene promotion, the sanitation. That means better health, increased output, better school attendance, better school performance. Granaries are fuller in the um, yards. And what does that mean? There's a word for it, development. So we're working, we're focusing on this one disease, trachoma, but when you think beyond the pill, it's contributing to something much larger. And this is also in Malawi, which is on, on the cusp of eliminating trachoma. And the way I look at this is that when we started in 1998, we thought there were about a billion people, a billion, at risk of this disease. In 2013, when we had decent mapping data, that was down to 325 million. Now, it's about 142 million people. And in 10 years or so, if we can maintain the momentum, this disease will be gone. And every surgery that's conducted, every dose of Zithromax that's distributed, every child who is educated to prevent disease, every water point, every outhouse, it's everyone is a step to a better world and a world that will be free of this miserable 
disease. And nobody will ever have to suffer the indignity of having their own eyes slashed out by their eyelashes. And that is what makes my heart beat. <laughs>